My workflow with GitLab is a bit different from other developers because I tend to push quite often and be very verbose. It's like if I would have the verbose flag on my brain switched on at all times. My name is Till Carlos and I run an agency for insurance and AI projects. I document the learnings from our projects and from my coding here for my team so we can all improve. And today we're going to look into how to write good merge requests or pull requests if you're in GitHub. The backstory basically is that I heard a couple of times that people think my commit history is quite too much, is quite verbose when I submit um, merge requests. And um, there's a solution to that, which I'm going to explain later. But for me, what's important here is that, that that's how I work, basically. I say what I do, then I'm going to do it, and then I tell people what I did. This has the huge advantage that the team is more in the loop of what I've been up to, and it also helps me think. And I want to quickly go over three steps how I do this. So first, I create the merge request with the first commit. When you use the console and you push into GitLab, they will give you an option to create a merge request quite fast and then they will just give you an empty text field to write down very fast how you operate and what you want to do. So I did this here. Um, this is a sample of a merge request. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow by the way. So if you're subscribing to my channel you will probably see the feature I'm going to build here. Quick spoiler, it's going to look like that. Okay, so what I'm basically doing in a merge request is I state the current the current state. So what is it that we're currently working on? What is the, How is the software like? Then I'm going to state the goal of what I want to achieve here. And this is as a domain uh, matter. So it's not important what's in here, but the structure is important. And then I make my steps for the implementation. And this is really the most important step because here I just think about and reason about how are the steps I'm going to unfold in, in order to fin finish this feature. A lot of developers are not doing that and then they get untangled into how they then solve that feature and then they forget to clean up, they maybe miss something in the implementation or they maybe choose an approach that's not even good enough because they haven't reasoned about it before. So that's what I do. Um, it looks like that. Um, mostly just a to-do to list and now on the third step, let me just go back. So um, create is the first, then we, then I write the merge request description. And after that, I'm, I'm coding it and then I'm taking all these boxes. So basically, as I'm going through, I'm just kick, um, clicking these boxes and ticking them off. And also I have this cleanup area where every time I find something that's not great, so code that I want to refactor or something that I want to do myself in order to hold myself to a high standard is I put this here in a cleanup section and then maybe some things I noticed along the way. There is one important principle um, that is at work here is when you start something, anything really, um, you normally start with high dopamine, you have the, all the best intentions, you have energy, you know exactly what you want. It all feels real. It feels like I can code this in a weekend. And as you go down the path of working through something, it, it starts to get more tedious. Some side effects, some, some side cases come into play that you haven't thought about. And then the whole thing gets bigger and harder to work through. And so by stating the intention very early on, basically you set the bar here and you try not to devi deviate from this bar of quality. And this is why I like this. And this is why I always operate my merge requests like that. And of course the side effect is that my team then sees what I'm up to and they can always see what the current status is that I'm working on. Product managers love that. They of course all love ticking boxes and they also like that they can look up a feature and see, okay, Till just committed like an hour ago. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna code this thing and I hope I'm gonna be done by then. So you can check out that as well. And one more important thing, which I haven't talked about before. If you do something like that, I'm gonna show you my commit history right now. It looks very verbose, right? And it always broke the CI here. And you see it's like six hours ago, five hours ago, four hours ago. So what I try to do is I try to push every hour at least. And ideally in coherent changes, so I don't push all over the place. I don't commit stuff that doesn't belong together, ideally. But then afterwards, I do a rebase. And the rebase is very important to be able to merge a feature that I've been working on more easily to the main branch. And it also helps me to then sort my merge requests and have them make more sense. And if you want to know how to do a git rebase, you can watch this video over here.